Let's move. ABC Thursdays. Firefighters, we're family. Station 19 is back for its final and hottest season yet. The subject has explosive chemicals. Get down! With fiery romances. You're the love of my life. And Andy is finally in charge. I'm going to be the best damn captain the station has ever seen. Station 19, all new Thursdays, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club! Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right, ChumbaCasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchases, over prohibited by law, 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. This podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Who's going to do the cold opener? Okay, well, it's been a while, so, you know, don't hold it against me. Welcome to the World of Martial Arts podcast. I'm here with my co-hosts, Kurt and Mick. And we're about a week past the Jake Paul versus Ben Askren fight, uh, which happened in Atlanta on the 17th of April. Uh, it finished pretty quickly with Jake Paul winning by KO in about, I think it was 1 minute 59, like very, very quick. Um, did you guys see the fights? What did you think to that particular match? Two minutes, couldn't call it a match. Uh, what I did actually like was, well, I've had to totally change the way that I look at Ben Askren. Because I thought it was an absolute douchebag, but he he played a blinder. He rocked up, took his shirt off, total dad bod, hadn't done any training whatsoever. And you're looking at it and you're going, this guy has turned up for the half a million dollar payday or whatever it was that he got. All I do know is the same weekend, what he got for losing in two minutes, the main eventers at the UFC didn't get combined. So that, first of all, gives you an idea of you know, where we can go with this whole thing. Uh, the fight was ridiculous. Um, it wasn't really a fight at all. The one thing you've got to give Jake Paul is due is, you guys are a lot younger than me, but I'm an old thar. I had absolutely no idea that the reach, as they say, that these influencers have. Like, it literally is. I swear to God, it is like they're you know, looking behind the curtain in The Wizard of Oz. And you're like, so these guys can sell t- two minutes of banal and awful fighting. A great build-up, don't get me wrong. The build-up was amazing. It's like watching the soap opera. But the fight itself was ridiculous. Askren didn't even try. Jake Paul didn't look that good. He dropped to his knees. Like, he w- literally, I thought it was Rocky Six when he dropped, dropped to his knees after winning it. And and then obviously, fair play, he dedicated to to his bodyguard who passed away and everything. And I don't really think the kid's an absolute douchebag. Um, For somebody who doesn't really have much talent, but just has applied himself, which is probably the most martial arts thing about it all, is he didn't have much talent, but applied himself. And guess what? Payday. So uh, all I know is I do believe that combat sports is finished now. We are a new era of, of combat sports because it is literally the, the lines are blurred between sports entertainment and what fighting is now. I'd like to put a pin in the like to, to circle back to what you were just starting to get into there, which is what the hell is happening with combat sports today? My response to this whole fight really was going to be to ask you a question, Nathan and Mick, you already just brought it up. Um, because Nathan, you've talked in a lot of in the past or you've referenced um like the, the reach and the numbers for fights, right? And you'll talk, I think especially when we talk about celebrity boxing in the past and about um, these, this, uh, 
these are two guys, right? Two brothers. Yeah, Jake and Logan. Yeah. I keep forgetting there's two of them. Okay, because one of them's gonna fight Mayweather. Yeah, it's the other brother. Logan's gonna fight Mayweather. The okay, the and the one who I think looks maybe less athletic, which is surprising to me, because I just I, I I don't know one from the other much about him. But you always point out very well that a lot of this comes down to dollars and cents, and I'm always looking at it as a fan and as a nerd, right? And I don't have much experience or exposure to the back end of these things. As a nerd, you know boxing history. Sure. So boxing history has not exactly always been right. Ultimate champions. As right. Exactly. That's a good point. Uh, but I was wondering if, for context, if you and Mick, if you guys could provide maybe some details that you know about, as far as like, like, I just don't understand why they would want to continue. Why Mayweather? I know he's he doesn't mind fighting for a paycheck i mean he's he's an incredibly paid athlete throughout history but why boxing as a whole like okay sorry i know i'm stammering but it's going to come down to this sorry Ant. <laughs> maybe you can edit to this mick you've pointed out that the main event combined didn't have the same amount of money as this match and i cannot wrap my head around that i don't understand that and i was wondering if either of you can shed light on how the hell that happens i don't think that's actually true but it depends. It depends what it really depends on what Jake got paid. So Jake's base pay, according to the Athletic Commission, was six hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Now, so that's just his wage for just turning up and doing the fight. Now, what it comes down okay. to is what he got from the pay per views, and I have no idea, and no one knows. Now he's claiming sixty five million, which is absolutely outrageous, and I don't believe for a second that's how much he made from it. Not even close. Now, it had 1.3 million pay-per-view buys, which is probably similar to the UFC. Um, but I know, I mean, the thing is, like, Usman made quite a bit. Usman made about 1.3 million from his fight. Um, the I think the Rose got um, 310,000. Um, so it really depends on what Jake actually made, and we don't know. The first thing after Jake Paul won that fight the first thing Snoop Doggy Dog started shouting was, Dana White, where's my mofo in money? Where's my mofo? And what he'd done was he'd done a bet for a million dollars straight, win or lose. Jake Paul was going to knock him out. And, you know, that's where it all is. Like, mm. it's, a, it's a mad setup now. A friend, I just saw two friends of mine talking on Facebook with each other about being part owners of the UFC. And they were like, well, technically I'm a part owner of the UFC now because it's been floating mm -hmm. and they've bought shares in it and they go, come and see me for matchups. And immediately I'm looking at it and I'm going, shit, if I miss the boat here, <laughs> I should be buying some shares in the UFC. Right. But it's, it right. literally is. It's like we're into a different era now where people are personally invested in fights regardless of if it's mma celebrity boxing ironically the one thing right. that people aren't getting into is legitimate boxing because legitimate boxing is literally i'm looking at it from the outside going no well we're gonna stick with this because we're not gonna sell out mm -hmm. and you're like but but guys, you're not really selling out. You're losing out. Yeah. You could be making a shitload of money here. Frank Warren will be in there in a heartbeat as soon as he realizes. Box it like you actually think Don King wouldn't be in the middle of all of this. <laughs> like Don King's raging right now that he isn't in part of this. You know what I mean? Well, it's weird. Like you mentioned what legitimate boxing. Mean. Okay, so Primo Canero. Primo was um, kind of like a, a mob champion. You know, he was put there by the mob. A lot of his fights were fixed. So that's, you wouldn't say that's really, is that legitimate? And that was a heavyweight champion of the world. And then also you look at guys coming up and, you know, you know, any boxer who's going to be even a slight prospect, he's going to get given bum after bum after bum after bum after bum. They're going to get given experience. They're going to get, you know, how many times have we seen these guys come up who look half decent and they're just beating nobodies in the first round, mm -hmm. not getting much experience in? Well, you know, if Jake Paul was a prospect, he'd be getting easy fights as well. Um and yeah, he fought someone, you know, in Ben Askren who has fought before. Yeah, okay, it's an overweight, retired, post-hip surgery wrestler. <laughs> um, but you would be get you would be seeing, you know, an up-and-coming pro fighting people that they would be in the first round. They just wouldn't be getting paid millions and put on the top of the bill. But then if he's actually selling 1.3 million pay-per-views, if that's true, then he should be top of the bill. Because <laughs> that's that's what someone would do in the UFC, a champion would do in the UFC. So it's a hard one to say what's legitimate because people would be put in these situations, fake champions, easy fights. This is part of boxing. 
Yeah. And anyone who could sell tickets would be put at the top of a card. I mean, we've seen that in MMA, I'm sure, plenty of times. The guy who can sell all the tickets is given the, the, sort of the top. Um, personally, yeah, obviously, I'm not a massive fan. I think people do underestimate him a little bit. Yeah, He had a, an MMA match with um, AJ. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, Jake Paul did. And the thing is, yeah, okay, he gets schooled. But the moment AJ shoots on Jake Paul and he resists a bit, you see how ridiculously strong he is. Like, he's, he's clearly an incredibly strong, athletic young guy. Um, and I think people do underestimate what kind of, how much of a basically just a jock athlete he is. Uh, it, yeah, not a great boxer. You know, he, he took out someone in a couple of minutes who's got the worst striking in MMA history. The guy just took a payday. But I don't think it, I mean, part of it really hurts to say it, but what is legitimate boxing? Is it any less legitimate than some of the crap I've seen in the ring before where people have been given easy fights? I don't know. I don't know. Today is a weird day because you just kind of made me a believer in this. <laughs> that is not what I anticipated. But, but honestly, that's I'm so glad that I asked. This is kind of the information and the, the context I was wanting to get is to wrap my head around. First of all, my big blank spot is that I always just flat out forget about pay-per-view numbers, as stupid as that sounds. But I'm, that's kind of what I mean about being like the martial art nerd or the boxing nerd about it is I'm just focused on like, oh, these two styles of boxers matching up and forget that there's this massive enterprise around it. So that all makes sense. Of course, the pay-per-view numbers for what Mick, it seems like you're describing as being this personality driven thing now. You know what I mean? Like that's the way of the future. And even, I don't know, Netflix itself has a different kind of personality, a different kind of uh, vibe around it than Blockbuster did and everything before it. So that actually makes sense. Um, and you're right. Anybody coming up, if, if they're going to be somebody, they're probably going to get fed a bunch of tomato cans, right? They're just going to be fed just a bunch of goofballs or, 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 or some guys that are, that are maybe legitimate. But, but I've, seen, I've seen guys like that who can sell 200 tickets hmm. to a show. And they get right. given like the guy who's not even from a gym, he's an independent, and he beats him. Right. And that's a guy who can sell a, a couple of hundred tickets, max, maybe even sell a hundred tickets. We're talking about yeah, a guy I mean, who's selling over would, a million pay per views here. Yeah, it's what it would be here. It'd be like some guy who sold a, a bunch of tickets to all of his cousins, and then me going in there and him just beating the hell out of me and being like, hey, you know, like well, that's it. If, if we both could make generate millions of dollars in the process good god why wouldn't we because if if he's really trying to get after it then that's that's kind of cool it's i don't assume that jake is really trying to do this legitimately because otherwise he'd be going through the legitimate channel but the idea that well what the hell if you can make a million dollars or millions of dollars in the process why wouldn't you that makes sense. It leaves me seem, I think is a little bit as what you're saying, Nathan, it leaves me a little disappointed or it leaves that bad taste in my mouth because it always bothers me that there's all these other young guys who don't have a choice. That's the only process they have available to them. The only thing if they have access at all is that, you know, coming from the bottom up thing. And because he's, it looks insanely strong. He's in great shape, but because he's, you know, some YouTube athlete or whatever, he gets to start at the top. You know, we've got one of these two fighting Mayweather now. That's as high as you can start. Well, you see, this is this is a crazy thing. My son Max was telling me, he, he, Jake Paul has a hit list of people that he wants to fight. And Conor McGregor is one of them. He just wants to get close to him. I don't buy it. He wants to get close to that money. That's yeah, yeah. That, well, that's, yeah. You, you, this is like this is what it all boils down to now, guys. Um, this is just yet another era of boxing, of combat sports. Uh, ironically, or you know, quite, <laughs> it, it, it's quite telling that it's the literal. I think the epitome of the they. You know, they say it in professional wrestling, it's breaking kayfabe is a huge thing. But going into business for yourself in the ring was like the worst thing you could ever do. So it's that whole beating the shit out of a guy legitimately in front of a load of people where you built this narrative behind it that this guy can't get you. Yeah. So now what you've got is you've got these guys who are going into business for themselves. And I think it's the logical conclusion of um you know, athletes taking control of themselves because the only people that seem to be pissed off about it are promoters because, uh, you know, Jake Paul, who does he need behind him? I don't know who promotes him. 
I think Jay Paul promotes Jake Paul. I think Conor McGregor promotes. I remember Conor McGregor. He it was where it was that realization, you know, where Neo is like, there is no spoon in the Matrix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Conor McGregor was he was live streaming himself going up and down the strip in Vegas with Dana White. He like Dana White had literally said, kid, this is all going to be yours. This is going to be yours. And he's doing this Facebook live thing or YouTube live, uh, YouTube thing. And you can see Conor, you can see this glint in his eye going, why do I need you now? And it's that moment where it's like, <laughs> I don't need you. But, and, and like this is like, we're living proof of this now. You know, we are four different personalities on screen right now, brought connected, and we can throw this out in what, six hours? And the information's out there, it's edited, it's done. Right. Uh, so you don't need to go through anyone now. And that's what this whole boxing thing is now. By go through anyone, you mean like the systems and everything that are in yeah, place that we're all of that is done, man. All right. of that is that, like, oh, well, we need to speak to the promoter. You know, you, we've all been there. We've all had to deal with some level of bureaucracy in the past to get anything done. You know what it's like. They think you want to get, you want to get change of use for your gym, right? How many times do you have to go through it? And they go, but why, why don't I just go boom and do this? And now these guys are proving it because Jake Paul's like, yeah, okay. You know, like who's Jake Paul going to fight next? The winter soldier. You know what I mean? I'd watch that. It's, it's interesting what you say when you brought up professional wrestling, maybe this is these, these shows are well, considering it's like Snoop Dogg doing commentary and it's, tied to an app and all that kind of stuff mm. maybe it's more close to pro wrestling than it is to boxing i don't know like it seems to have like the storylines and the, all that kind of stuff more so than the actual their actual sporting history um so i don't know maybe, maybe it is closer to that it, it's it's like the the birth of a new format possibly a little bit i mean we're in it's weird there was a it always stuck with me about five years ago i was in a doctor's office and there was a, a magazine you know you pick one of those magazines up and you flick through it and there was an image and on the front it had um donald trump conor mcgregor um kanye west um i think it probably had logan paul or something like that, all these people and i can't remember the exact title but it was basically it's the era of the dickhead Right. It was like it basically it's like we're in the era of the brash person who makes loads of claims, can't back it up. Um, it just talks about themselves, talks about money, talks about this. And it was like, oh, we're in the era of that. I'm not sure we've never not been in the era of that. But with <laughs> like like Mick said, the the chance of you know self-promoting yourself now, you can go straight in. There's no gatekeepers to go to like you know the mainstream media. You can just put stuff out, which is exactly what the you know Logan Paul and his brother have done. They've gone straight to to the source, gone straight out, got got their own audience. Um, they don't need people to kind of stop them. Um, I mean, I think some you know some of these people would have been kept away from TV, would have been kept away from stuff because. It, but now they can just you know. I mean, again with Trump as well. I guess with Twitter and things like that, that these some of these people can just get an audience directly. And whether we like it or not, some people do seem to like it. I don't know. I mean, the idea of this thing being personality driven, then that's just like you were saying with Netflix, Mick. I'm going to keep kind of coming back to that in my head. That's where we see everything going now is personality driven. Even story writing for television has changed and improved because you have so many of these, you know, whether it's The Wire or Game of Thrones or, you know, the first one that I saw that was like this was Sons of Anarchy where they're very character driven and you're like, this is a different kind of show writing, right? So, so many things where we're used to seeing, um, whether it's Mick Tully, we're used to seeing people on social media where we're following people who are not necessarily following your business, Mick, like I, I will follow your business and I do, and I'm always impressed by the videos or something cathartic to watching them. You're a talented dude, but that's not the thing that we're engaging with, right? We're engaging with Mick. And that's what we're seeing, I guess, echo in every other thing. I was saying in the middle of the quarantine, it hit me, we're gonna hit a point where we just start subscribing to people. Cutting out that network or that structure means we no longer would need Instagram, Facebook, or whatever. We just have a platform where I'm just paying to subscribe to Mick because this is everything he does. This. Someone's literally and doing so that right now. And it's uh, there's Dogecoin, which seems to be a little bit of a... Uh, it's, 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 it's a weird thing in the crypto world right now. There's a website, Dogecoin, mm -hmm. where 
creating profiles for famous people okay. and then you like buy coin and then kind of like subscribe to each person and saying oh i give a little bit to them because but the thing is obviously they're actually stealing people's profiles sure. they'll put elon musk on there but elon Musk not got actually well anything and to do with patreon it. is playing in that space um hell only fans is playing in that space you know what i mean there's there's people on there that are doing yeah, like but- straight lace work and not just like at and over content which i can't imagine why you would do that but um, but you know all these different sites that's the point you're subscribing to the individual and so i guess if you're really into jake paul and you literally or figuratively subscribe to that guy as an individual and then you're going to find out jake paul's about to go fight somebody that might be sort of famous yeah you're going to want to watch that because that's what you're into you're maybe not even into boxing you're just into watching jake paul fight you, you've just hit on something there it's like as we were talking, the, kept thing, the, the, the one phrase that keeps coming to me is that you're emotionally invested. Yeah, right. And you really are, because it's almost like, like, I know this is like an episode of Black Mirror level shit that we're getting into here now, but it's that whole thing where it's like, um, I know people that think that they they have a relationship with somebody they see on YouTube sure. more than they have a relationship with somebody that they know in the real world. And, yeah. he, you know, it's like with, with Jake, with Jake Paul and Logan Paul, again, like I, I was doing the stand up bit and I'm still working on it now because I started off with a, a girl called Jay Goody. She's passed away now, but she was like the first gatekeeper of we will celebrate mediocrity. And then I was watching her and going, but like she can't, like her, she can't even speak English. Well, you know, what's going on with this woman? But the problem was, because she appealed to so many other mediocre individuals, they jumped on it. So I've got this theory now that everybody who, like, there's a literally legion of douchebags who dress like Jake Paul, who have that ridiculous haircut like him, those awful tattoos, but they're now, like, like he's like their alpha male. He's like, literally, it's like the church of Jake Paul. And like, you know, unfortunately, this makes me sound like an old fart, but there's way more of them than there are of us. You know what I mean? Because it's like, there's all these mediocre dudes out there and it's like, why do they watch, you know, Real Housewives of Manhattan or Real Housewives of Brooklyn or I don't know, Real Housewives of Mendota Heights in Minneapolis now, I don't know, whatever it's called. But you know, it's like mediocrity sells. And like, we, we, we've seen it because Jake Paul versus Ben Askren, I've seen better fights outside of a chip shop. Like that is the truth, sure. but I swear to God, it was compelling to watch. Literally, it was like a car crash. You know, when you're on the you're on the motorway or the freeway, and you're driving past and go, "I really shouldn't look. I really shouldn't look." And you go, "Ah, must look." It was exactly the same thing. Uh, all I do know is, I think it's. I don't know if it's a new thing. I think it's just another era of what we're going to have. You know, because we, if we look at boxing, you can clearly define some of the eras. But me and Nathan were talking offline about this. But the 80s, when you look at it now, like, have you ever seen any sports go in line so much as Rocky films? So literally, Rocky won. The guy is beating up like a rack of ribs, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and then five years later, he's getting his teeth done. And part of my French amp again, you might have to get this out, right? Because it might demonetize us or whatever. But he's got a motherfucking robot butler. <laughs> so literally, within three movies, he's gone from working out at a butcher's to a robot butler. And you're like... <laughs> uh, it goes from the, an American uh, dream underdog story to excess and 80s yes, and all right. that kind yeah, of Yeah, Gordon Gecko, Gordon Gecko with a pair yeah. of gloves. It lit, but yeah. but it but it's the truth because it's like the seventies. If we go so if we good. go back and we look at the seventies, very Scorsese like, yeah. very Mean Streets, sixties. Well, you know what I mean? Rocky so, won won the Oscar for a reason. You know what I mean? It's like a that's a proper film and it's completely different. Yeah, when you look at Rocky IV, hey, which you, starts off with the two gloves, the American and the USSR glove, and then the one explodes yeah. like that. It's hey, funniest. I tell you what. Uh, guys, guys, if you're watching at home, go back and watch Raging Bull, and I swear to God, you will come out of that like it's like a David Fincher movie. I don't know if you've guys gone back and watched Raging Bull sure. recently, but it's like, hmm, tell you, I'm emotionally overwrought when I watch that movie now. <laughs> it's well, mad. 
So the big thing that I personally that I learned like uh, from listening to you guys explain and, and uh, the back end of this thing and having the discussion about how this thing works and what's shed a big light on it to me is I think for me, there's a difference between somebody being a boxer and somebody who's doing boxing. And I'm going to phrase it that way on purpose because you hear people say, oh, I do boxing now. And they're like, right, okay, that's different than somebody who tells you I'm a boxer, right? You, the whole thing is different. And I always think that as a martial artist, at what point do I, I watch it on the mat, do I watch my students go from being someone who's quote unquote doing martial arts to this is their thing. They're a martial artist now. This is, this is somehow part of them. And I also think oftentimes that transition can be toxic for people it can be like there's a whole lot of stuff that gets packed into that but there's a difference and if jake paul is making millions of dollars doing boxing good for him that doesn't necessarily mean he's in the same organizations that he's in you know he's fighting for the same belts or whatever because this is its own promotion isn't it right and that was something else yeah, i hadn't even it's, considered it's, was that part it's, it's tied to an app and yeah. people won play the spectators won a place on the app it's some video app called thriller I, I truly do believe that I, I think this is just a, ne a next era, but it, it's ironic that the promoters won't be part of this. It, like, it, you know, that's, you know, Don King, Eddie Hearn, guys like that don't need them anymore. The thing is, it's like, if it's tied so much to one personality, the thing is with a promoter, the fight, you know, often, as you know, you've seen promoters treat people just like cattle. They come in, they'll build them up, get rid of them, you know, slaughter them, put someone else in. When it's if, if someone's promoting their own fights, unless they've got a stable of people themselves to come up behind them, they're building up and maybe using some of their, um, you know, like attention to and, and shedding it onto them and then building them up, it'll die when they stop, it'll be dead. So, you know, they'll come, those, those kind of promotions will come and go and they might just disappear and then the big ones will come back in and take the space. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, what, what, you, what you need is a fighter who's, a good legitimate boxer who's doing the whole Jake Paul Conor McGregor thing, like that's what it will yeah. be. There'll be another one like that. That's what will happen, and because they'll hit both markets, they'll get both. Right, that's interesting. Yeah, but the, the, the only thing, it, the only thing, the only thing is, it's like Canelo Alvarez, Triple G, or Lomachenko. I, I don't see anyone else. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye out because I really want to see the next Matrix guy. That's interesting, though. Yeah, I mean, because those guys are so talented, but there's no like. There's no self-promotion. Is that why, like, do you have to sacrifice some talent or something if you're going to put that much mental bandwidth into self-promotion? Or, I mean, obviously, Connor. Or you have a team who does it for you. Right. I, I mean, I'm guessing right. a lot of these famous influencers and stuff, That's there's true. people doing most of That's it for true. them. You know? Yeah, but the, the other one as well is, like, you know, guys, without making us all sound like old farts, I don't know if Will's recording yeah, that. Yeah, if, without sounding like old farts, you got to remember, a lot of this is still pretty new to us. But we're talking about guys you now who've grown up with this shit, you know. Like that's oh, that's all they know. Yeah. It, they, they, they don't know people who are on TV shows. They don't know, you know. They know people that are YouTubers. Right. You know, that's what. Yeah, it's, do you remember? Do you remember the days? Do you remember the days when you used to go back? You go to school, and every single one of you had this commonality because you'd watched not the nine o'clock news or you'd watched something the night before. Where right. it was like now, it's like no. The, like the only thing that I see now is. Like literally, line of duty is the only like it's a bit of a throwback because people are like, Fuck, man, I've got to see this at nine o'clock. You know what I mean? He like he's been really smart because he's tapped into this. This site, like, right? Nine o'clock Sunday night, everyone will want to watch this, and it's like he's got the the episodic TV thing going on, but he's also got it's like event TV again, which you know we we've lost event TV because it's like oh no, I'll watch it when I want to watch it. And like, and the thing, the thing is, so I've been studying this because it's quite a phenomenon, I think. It, like Nathan, you won't go. I know you will not go on Facebook if there's been UFC because you don't want the spoiler alert, right? Because it no, no, the opposite. I'm the one person who does not care about spoilers nah. at all. Like I, I'm not bothered in the slightest about knowing the result before. From I won't, I won't, I won't go. I won't go nowhere. I won't go near anywhere near. For any social media when line of duty if i haven't seen it because i swear to god the <laughs> last thing like, kurt you gotta watch this show man it's it's it, yeah, i was like that with um game 24 of on a budget overkai. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, Cobra you, Kai drove me nuts because so many, some of you people listening too, I'm sure, are guilty of it. Because Cobra Kai was one where like we're all in this together. This is our show. Stop spoiling it. You know, some of us are busy. We haven't watched it yet. <laughs> people just be putting everything out. What do you mean, people listening? This is not going out. This. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> Right then, uh, who's who's Mick now talking about watching nine o'clock yeah, news? Yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> no, on the, the contrary, TV, though. But I was day. just going to say, I mean, that it's, I, I almost disagree in the sense that, like, I think that's a really, really, really important point. I think the thing you're saying about the generational difference is specifically what I'm trying to wrap my head around. Everything that you guys just explained to me, the overarching thing is if my 21 year old nephew was sitting here right now, he'd be like, what the hell are you on about? What are you even talking about? They're boxing each other. And I'm like, well, that's not boxing. And he's like, they're boxing. So it's boxing like that would be the because for me, I'm conceptualizing boxing as this. So it has its own universe its own ethos around it. It has this history. It has this culture. It has these standards. It has these organizations and these famous people and its own hall of fame and all this different kind of stuff. And I think if you're 16, if you're 20 right now, things don't look that way. We, we don't have the same kind of institutions anymore that we used to have because the internet has made everything so evenly available and distributed. Right. Mm -hmm. So the idea of like, going, well, me thinking, how come he gets a shot? He's not even a boxer. And somebody else going, yeah, he is. And he's about to box that guy. Like, well, yeah, but it's different. It's not anymore. You know, it's just not different. And he can sell more pay-per-views than nearly yeah. any other boxer. Right, out there. right, so exactly. It's so it's just, it's, it's there. Everything is kind of enmeshed, right? And again, personality driven in that way. So people aren't going there to watch the art or the sport or the science of boxing. They're going there to watch those two people box. And sometimes with boxing, that's certainly what it is. But I feel like usually it, it's, it's going to at least include the other part, right? You know, if you're going to watch Canelo fight somebody, it's, you, it's not because you really like him. It's because you want to watch him do his thing. You know, he's a magician when he's in there, and it's fun to watch that. As opposed to, you know, well, I've been watching this guy since he was young, and now he's still on here. And, I, you know, people have a crush on him or something, so they want to go watch him take a shirt off and fight a dude. I don't, maybe that's too personal. You get what I mean. <laughs> so maybe there is a bit of survivor bias of information that carries on through history. So we look back and you might go, yeah, but like that year, there was this great boxing bout with Roberto Duran or something. Yeah, there was probably also... 20,000 mismatches yeah like but no one remembers any right. of those like or saw any of those or whatever like the majority of fights were probably crap and mismatches like but you remember the great fights and you look through history and that's what you see and you go oh that's what boxing is and I don't know I don't know I don't, I'm not sure how I feel about it but it's, well, it's one of the things though like with um, you know I'm a massive film fan and one of the things I, I see people reviewing films sometimes and I see like some guy reviewing a kid's film and saying how terrible it is. <laughs> and sometimes you got to, sometimes you got, actually you got, you got to remember not everything is for right. you. Like, yeah. and just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's not good. You know, I might not want to watch Jake Paul fight is, but it's not for me, is it? It's for the people who watch it go on his YouTube yeah, channel. Right. Um, yeah. I can have an opinion on that, but it's not designed for me. So why would I like yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Great, great yeah, point. Nathan, you hit nail on the head. It's like, when you go back and watch Star Wars as a grown man, especially, again, a lot, I'm a little bit older than you guys. So v I remember VHS being a thing. And I remember how amazing it was to be able to get a film on tape and watch it when you wanted to watch it. And it wasn't the cinema and it wasn't edited on BBC or ITV with the adverts. And I remember going back and watch it. And I remember like Star Wars 1, I was like, hokey. Start Empire. I was like, "Fuck, man, this is amazing." Empire, uh, Return of the Jedi. I was like, "How did I forget about those annoying Ewoks?" And it was like, and it's that point where it's like, and people started a religion. Oh, I'm a Jedi, and I remember guys saying, "I'm a Jedi." Oh, I'm really cool. And then you look back at those movies and go, "Oh man, it's awful." And it was like, it's like Nathan said, it goes. Sometimes there is a little bit of survivor bias there. You look back at it, you go, "Yeah, it's great." So yeah, I, I don't know, yeah. To sum it up on the old uh, Jake Paul scenario, it's like, it ain't for me, but it must be for someone because those pay-per-views are numbers, man. Yeah, there's no joking aside there. Find more great shows or join the team at sport-social.co.uk. 
Social Podcast Network.